Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 136, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23, at comcast.net. Let's get right to it. First one's called All Fake Earth GPS Photos. Mark thought this would be of interest to the Flat Earth community. There may come a time when we cannot believe our own eyes when viewing photos or video footage. Please share. And there's a link to defense1.com. And it's an article. An article doesn't seem to go anywhere. I, I paused that and waited for a while. I was like, all right. Um, so check it out if you get a chance. It's called, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to link it to you guys. The This one's called Watch Flat Earth Can't Science. Anthony Riley gets schooled on YouTube. Uh, oh, oh, this is a troll. This is a troll uh, email. It's very short, though. Uh, Anthony Riley, one of your deluded friends. If so, have a quiet word with him. I would. Uh-huh. That's from Gordon Michael Robert. Michael Robert Gordon? Maybe. I don't know. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark. My name is Kevin Nagar. I watched your YouTube series, and I have a number of questions about the Flat Earth theory. Mr. Sergeant, would you mind if I ask you a question? Um, regards Kevin and I'm going to reply and say yeah send your questions Mark there you go live response okay moving on this one's called meetup vid uh, Mark please play tonight thank you Okay, guys, if you're going to send me a meetup video and you want me to reproduce it on my channel, and this was sent quite a while ago, you're going to have to give me more details than that, and you got to send me, you got to give it to me more in advance. And in fact, let me click on it just to see how far off it happened. It, uh, it's called Meetup San Buena Ventura State Beach. Yes, I did reproduce this one uh, by The Plain Truth, and it is going to be April 28th his 47th birthday so cool so yes if you make a video on your channel make sure you give me plenty of advance notice this guy was actually okay and i will put it on my channel because as you know i do a lot of promos for flat earth this one's called question about the flat earth hello mark my name is thiago i am 13 years old i am from argentina and i write you because i have some questions about the flat earth that I would like you to clarify. Last Wednesday, I had a debate at my school where we talked about the flat earth. I was in favor of flat earth. My arguments were very good because I was studying flat pages and documentaries, but the teacher said several things that were refuting my arguments. What I come to ask you is, if the earth is flat, how would the movement, here we go, of the stars in the Northern hemisphere and the Southern hemisphere be explained? Example, uh, here in Argentina, the stars turn to one side and the stars in Spain turn to another side. And according to some uh, terra planistas, <laughs> the stars do not move. How would this be explained? Multiple projection systems. Uh, instanced uh, sky. It's software. It's not very hard. There is also the theory that if the earth is round why do not we just stay with a plane in the air and arrive in another country in a short period of time yeah i know uh, but how do you explain that if you go on a train and jump to fall in the same place or even if you go in a car you throw out a ball it'll fall in your hand will not go back how do you explain this what, what relative motion and uh, kinetic energy that's tied to it, it again they're two completely different things uh, the earth in a plane is completely different from a ball inside a car. Sorry, it is. Uh, finally, the dome. If the earth is covered by a dome, how do asteroids enter the earth? I don't know. Throw a rock into an aquarium, uh, into a little... How does that work? I just want to know for this Wednesday to go to class and refute the arguments of my teacher, of course. Thank you, Thiago. And unfortunately, he wrote this back on April 2nd. I'm sorry there, there's only circumstances there's only so much i can do uh, i could not get to this kid's email in time hopefully he did well this one's called mark are all earth telescopes just seen generated lights inside an enclosed earth yes is the milky way galaxy that we see on a clear star night just a generated light design inside the enclosed earth yes there you go thanks tom yep absolutely that's from thomas crouch this one's called wtf 
Mark, how is this possible? More Mandela effect? Why wasn't this taught in school? More lies by omission? So bizarre. All right, and it's from Todd, and I will click on the YouTube thing, and it's called The Great Reset of 1811 through 1816, Record Mud Floods, Quakes, Volcanoes, Tsunamis, Fires, and Black Suns. Yeah, it's very possible. Uh, remember, me memory is a very, very fragile thing, and it only takes one or two generations to change history. So is it possible that there was terraforming not that long ago, well, a couple hundred years ago? And that we missed it uh, because, it, you know, the history books were erased? Possibly. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to discount it because how could I? The Remember, if I wake up with flat earth, how can I really discount anything? I'm going to give everybody the time of day when it comes to their conspiracies now. Whereas before, I wouldn't. This one's called Hello Mark. I know that you guys, you and Patricia, aren't shills or anything else. What you speak is truth. There is one thing... On the film, I imagine he's talking about the documentary, that stood out and people are hammering me with, conspiracy people that is, you said that he woke to Flat Earth tr Truth at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, you said that he, you mean me? Uh, oh, anyway, the Flat Earth clockmaker showed one of the creations. He said it was number 33 and signed his name to it. I'm sure that you know about the number 33 when it comes to the Illuminati. Did you realize this? It added fuel to the fire. Have you guys discussed it? I really wish that it was never mentioned. I look forward to following you. I subscribed on YouTube. Have a great day and look forward to your uh, to your answer. Uh, okay, yeah. First off, very, very true. I mean, I did wake up at 3.30 in the morning. Lots of people have that. I, you know, More specifically, I wrote, woke up at like 3.33. It was really creepy. Uh, if you want to think it's a synchronicity thing, is 3.33 better than just 33? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, as far as the coincidence or the, the fact that the director picked Chris's model number 33 to show, I think the director was, yeah, kind of poking fun uh, when he did that. And I think he also grabbed... He didn't have to include either of those. Remember, I had no power in the editing of this film. So blame the director when it comes to showing the, uh, the 33s. And who knows, maybe the director was in on it. Maybe he's paying homage to the Illuminati. Maybe. I don't know. Daniel seemed like a pretty straight shooter, but pff, who knows nowadays. If you're in Hollywood, you're there for a reason, and there's a lot of people in Hollywood that would sell their souls for fame and fortune, which is why I'm not in Hollywood. This one's called Eclipse Video Debunked. Mark, is the Eclipse Video debunked by this explanation? And there's a YouTube link. If you're going to send me YouTube links, it's really helpful if you send me the... Uh, name of it. So at least I know what I'm clicking into. Uh, this particular video, which was done in 2017, come on. Uh, it's called, Why Does the Eclipse Move from West to East? Is the Eclipse Going Backwards? And it's from a channel called Free School. Oh, interesting. I actually never watched this. And the, he's got a, a, almost 200,000 subscribers. Is he a flat earther? I don't think he is. I, I would have I would have heard of him. So it's good. Thank you for that. And that's from It's Flat, Not a Globe. First name, it's flat. Last name, not a globe. This one's called CBS and YouTube versus the fans. Uh, Mark, this guy's name was Mundane Matt. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that that's off topic. It's not flat Earth. Uh, it was. It's about how franchises, all all the franchises nowadays, are getting just crushed by social justice warriors. I mean, everything: Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who. Uh, the Avengers, take your pick. They're all getting, they're all going down in flames, which is unfortunate because I, I loved a lot of them. This one's called Logan Paul allegedly robbed after mocking flat Earth community, and that's a headline from Dexterdo.com, and that's the name of the headline. And yes, of course, it was done on April Fool's Day, and Logan got a fake police officer and staged a fake robbery. And said that flat earthers did it and again he's riding our coattails just trying to claw his way back into social media it is not going to work and and of course the the capper was just a couple days ago he brought on alex jones alex jones has been banned from all sorts of different media and logan paul's bringing him in because hey why not he's controversial he, he he's desperate both of them are desperate at this point this one's called Behind the Curve, Inspired to Ask Questions. Dear Mark, I have watched the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve and was intrigued to watch some of your videos to see what evidence you gave to support the claim. I feel compelled to ask some questions. No doubt you get a lot of emails and I don't really expect you to reply, but I am genuinely curious. Volcanoes. 
You are proposing that volcano eruptions are the result of some kind of advanced mechanical plant beneath the surface of the earth. Then how do you account for ancient eruptions such as Pompeii or Krakatoa? Well, it's still mechanical. Well, even mechanical eruptions could be devastating. I'm not saying that, that volcanoes are completely controlled to be safe. Volcanoes are super dangerous. So Pompeii or Krakatoa, uh, two of my favorite volcan volcanic er eruptions, uh, yeah, they killed people. But, uh, but you know what? Fair warning. If there is an active volcano, you shouldn't build your city right beneath it or on top of it. It's just, look, it's grounds rumbling. There's stuff coming out. Why would you live there? Ugh, humans. Uh, the South Pole, Sir Ranel Fiennes made a transglobe expedition expedition from Gren Greenwich, Greenwich down to the pole through Africa and then up the other side to the North Pole before returning to Greenwich. Lisa Blair becoming the first woman to sail around Antarctica. These are scientific bases. Oh, I'm sorry. There are scientific bases all over Antarctica. Yeah, military science, not corporations, just military science. This guy's obviously a globalist. But let's let's keep going. Curvature of the Earth is visible from a plane. If it is, show me. I'll quit flat Earth tomorrow. Take a picture of it. Put it on a, on any sort of laptop or screen. Hold a straight edge up to it. Tell me if the curvature is still there. If it is, send it to me. I will quit flat Earth. Oh, even on the horizon from a mountaintop. Yep, you can see it. Or looking out to sea. I've seen it. Yep, here he is. I've seen the curve. Well, then why start with the plane? And then he's just working his way down. I basically this guy's saying I've seen the curve from a plane, from a mountain, from the the beach. And it's like okay, fine, show it to me. If you can, then I'll quit flat Earth. And yeah, uh, seasons being opposite northern and southern hemispheres not hard. If the Earth is flat, then there's no reason for this to be the case. Not true. Flights, for example, there are nonstop flights available. Here we go from Johannesburg to San Paulo. There are 10.5 hours. There's a shorter time than flying from Paris to San Paulo, which takes 12 hours. A flight I took myself recently in the flat earth model, uh, the Joburg, he means Johannesburg, to Brazil flight uh, would take a lot longer. No? Uh, who do you envi envision having made the dome? Aliens. In fact, I have just got to that part of your clues videos. He hasn't even finished the clues yet. And I see now that you're talking about some creators and I'm afraid that's when my interest starts to wane. And yet I'm in your head because you wrote me this long email. I hope you all get to carry out your big tests. Might I suggest that sailing around Antarctica coast is a good place to start. It won't take half as long as you think. Best wishes, Stephanie. Wow. Well, again, I don't mind letters like this because if I if I inspired them or the Flat Earth inspired them enough to actually write me and just hit me with this stuff, which is what the reaction I'm looking for. Great. Fantastic. Thank you, Stephanie. It's very helpful. This one's called Area 150, or sorry, Area 51 Whistleblower. Earth is all there is. Mark, not sure if you've seen this, but you may like it. A young woman who was pondering spirituality told this story in the middle of her video. She told about her very own space grandpa conversation. And now the YouTube flat earth rabbit hole has her thinking that the conversation she had with him before he died years ago. Uh, and... It is a video called, My Grandpa Worked for the Pentagon and Tried to Tell Me the Earth Was Flat. Uh, and the channel is called Mind Unveiled. And it was sent to me by Bill Keith. And yeah, I listened to it. It was very, very interesting. I highly recommend that you guys listen to that one. Because she was to, her grandpa told her that when he was at Area 51 and he was, he was talking to people out there, they said, no, no, this is all there is in the universe. There is only this. There is no, you know, galaxy and he, all these other planets. It's there's only Earth, and I thought that was very, very fascinating. So check it out. This one's called "If You Are the Same Person I Think You Are, Then Please Respond at Your Own Time." Mark, now you might be thinking, "God, another person that is going to criticize everything," but hear me out. And he spelled here wrong. I recently, that's not a good sign. I recently watched your Behind the Curve documentary on Netflix, and I have some questions for you if you're interested in what I have to say. You know what? Because he's a globalist, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, yes, please send your questions. Mark. All right. He is sorted out, and I'm sure he will send questions and be amazed because he sent them weeks ago. Or he sent the, the initial email weeks ago. This one's called Hello Mark. It is flat indeed, because what we call reality 
is a singularity simulation. So it is flat just like any sandbox video game. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, uh, you think, uh, but that's what I believe and I want to share with you in case you, in case it could help somehow. Uh, and that is, his name's Paul from Canary Islands. I would love a response. You know what? I'm going to write back to him and say, yep, absolutely. I've thought about it and send me, send him my uh, video that I made a couple of years ago when I was up in Canada called um, Flat Earth in, in relation to virtual reality which is really cool. Again, it's a little heady stuff, and unless you're into uh, software development and physics, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little tricky, but you might like it. You never know. This one's called Flatter Theory. Mark, is the world flat? And if so, do you mind giving me some more details? Thank you, Colton Robinson. I, I don't know how it's... <laughs> Here's the thing. If he actually found my email and wrote me, that means he actually watched some of my stuff. So the details he's already in the middle of. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure because the, my email was not in the documentary. So whatever this one's called, are you really going? Oh yeah. And this is a link to the daily mail uh, article on UK flatter society goes to the edge to prove the world isn't round. No, there is not going to be a 2020 cruise to the end of the world. Now, there may be a 2020 cruise leaving from Miami, which has the Flat Earth Conference on it from the U.S. There, there may be that. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. But there is no 2020 cruise to Antarctica. And logically, I don't know how the media missed this because the last thing you would ever do is put cruise ships near icebergs remember the titanic we don't do that anymore you don't send cruise ships anywhere near icebergs it's a super super bad idea and but again again once the first couple stories got out there everybody else jumped on it and the media doesn't check references anymore so go figure this one's called new airline tracking system mark i'm not sure who in flat earth might be interested in following up in this new event but here are some addresses that will lead you to information or fantasy uh and the big one's called arion.com a i r e o n.com and they're talking about arion launches first world airline surveillance system which is interesting right because that just happened so so basically they're admitting so we weren't tracking airlines until 2019 april 2019 weren't tracking them anyone anyone gonna address that anyone 2015 i wrote about it that letter was sent to patricia steer and myself this one's called round earth hi mark i caught you on behind the curve last night i'm a game developer and entrepreneur one of the artists who works on our games created a comic called Flat, and I've been debating with him and his Flatters group for years. I have a strong background in physics, which I needed to make a compelling video game. Initially, I used this knowledge to explain the differences between gravity and fluid dynamics. That strategy tended to go over most people's heads. Yes, absolutely. So I made this simple illustration, and he did it on Facebook. I realize at this point that you're probably too invested in your new way of life to come back to round earth. <laughs> oh, let's see where this goes. But I thought I'd give it a shot. It's been years for me. And although I've seen experiments citing uh, tall structures that should be less visible, etc., at the end of the day, the earth is huge and it's not perfectly round. So it'd be very difficult to ascertain its roundness by line of sight. That's why we do it over water, because roundness over water is always the same, but that's okay. About a year and a half ago, I met Buzz Ald oh boy. I met Buzz Aldrin at a NASA tech startup competition in Hampton, Virginia. I asked him what he'd say to flat earthers. And I quote, try not to fall off the turtle's back. Okay. In my opinion, Flat Earth is one of the best and worst movements to happen. It's great because people are questioning authority and they are running their own experiments. However, people are also becoming dogmatic about a belief in something which is nowhere close to true. It's spelled nowhere wrong. This is, of course, part of a larger problem of conspiracy theories. I agree with one thing. The name of science has been smeared by power grabs just as faith was before it. And as news continues to be under assault, real science, news, and faith are all still possible thought. Sorry, though. And I'd wager they are absolutely necessary if we are to continue to make this world a better place. Good luck in your individual search for truth and meaning. That's from Jeremy. You know what? 
It's not a bad email. Thought it was going to get much worse. And no, I'm not going back to the globe anytime soon. Sorry, the subject matter experts alone were, are going to keep me there pretty much till the end. This one's called Found This on Facebook. Uh, let's see, truththeory.com. Flat Earthers spent $20,000 trying to prove the Earth is flat and it didn't go well. Yep, that article was reproduced. That's from the documentary. This one's called St. Michael's College Interview. Hi, I'm Mark. First of all, thank you for the shout out regarding my silly mix. I, I, am, I live at Fourth, Fort Ethan Allen, which is a stone's throw away from St. Mike's. Uh, like, oh, yeah, 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 this guy, I'm sorry, this this was an email. Uh, somebody listened to my St. Michael's College interview, and he wanted to talk to the guy. So uh, that's from uh, Brendan, and I unfortunately have not sent it to him yet, so I will try to if I get a chance. This one's called Maps. Mark, where is a good site to go for a really high-quality image of the AE and other Flat Earth maps to download for printing? Thanks, Kirk. I uh, boy, take take your pick. I uh, just again type in azimuthal equidistant into Google, and hit click on images and see what you find. That you're gonna have stuff of varying resolution. They're all over the place. Uh, different people have posted on different sites, and if you still can't find anything, uh, you can ask me, and I'll, I'll I've got you know some on file I can send you. There's probably better stuff out there though. To be honest, just do your own research. You'll find it. Not hard. This one's called Nice Music Track by Fabric or Fabrique. Also have a question. Hi, Mark. I just want to compliment you on your new video, Flat Earth License Plate. What an awesome soundtrack by Fabrique. And that's, by the way, it's spelled F-A-B-R-I-K. Very nice indeed. I, it really spoke to me. They contacted me, that band out of England, and said, hey, we'd love to have you use one of our songs in some sort of Flat Earth thing. And I said, you know what? One of their songs called White Star was so cool. I really, really loved parts of it that I decided to include the entire thing. I, I used the entire song and played it on uh, the backdrop for my license plate compilation. So that was fun. Uh, let's see here. I know that your background has been in gaming. Do you ever meet any of the old new tech crowd that departed Topeka in 1994 and formed Play Inc.? No, I have not. Uh, such as the late Paul Montgomery or Kiki Stockhammer. Patricia Steer reminds me a lot of Kiki. Thanks, Steve Harris. Uh, no, sorry. I mean, I knew a lot of the old game people back in the day. Um, let me think. Uh, probably the most famous would be the Bungie team. Uh, most people don't know that before Halo, Bungie was just a little Mac developer. And uh, rivals of ours, we were star playing, made, made uh, uh, computer pinball games, and they made a little first person shooter called Marathon, which was the Mac, and they made it before Doom by id, sorry, I'm getting into the geek stuff, was ported over from PC to the Mac. Uh, and so Marathon was very popular in the Macintosh, and it was this cool first person shooter. And yeah, I knew these guys and, and, and hung out with them at conferences, and it was, it was fun. And then, uh, of course, of all things, you know, Microsoft was running around looking for projects and they went up to Chicago where Bungie was and said, hey, what are you guys working on? And it's like, well, we got this project we're never, ever going to finish called. I remember them telling me about this called Halo and, you know, with Microsoft backing it, it's like, oh, yeah, we'll help you finish that. <laughs> and a legend is born. So how fun. This one's called Danny Ermis Flat Earth Test. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I have the best way we can prove the earth is flat and not only will it price it's flat, if it is, it will also prove the earth is round. I, 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 by the way, I'm not going to correct the spelling on this. Uh, if it is, I know it will work a thousand percent. Oh boy, this is going to be a cliffhanger. And it's very simple. The one of two results will prove once. Yeah, I know it's a cliffhanger. Once and for all, uh, uh, the truth. I have a feeling it's flat as well because the Bible says when Jesus comes back, all will see him ascending to the heavens. If it's round, sounds like half the world would see him. Uh, it's all flat. All would see. Please call me. Here's his phone number. My name is Danny. I live in New Jersey. Uh, you know what? I'm going to respond to him, even though this is a cl cliffhanger. You don't send me emails. It's like, I've got the absolute test. And all you have to do is email me back and I'll, I'll give you more information. No, you better send it to me right away. I get a lot of emails. But I do like the biblical reference, which is a lot of people, if, if you're into the Bible, know that uh, if, if you believe in the second coming, that every eye will see him. 
when he shows up. Well, how's that possible? Not everybody I can see him if the world is a globe, because if he's he's on one side, by definition, the globe on the other side, you won't be able to see to see the second coming. And I've actually had people tell me more than uh, more than one uh, tell me, well, that's going to be possible through television or smartphones. People on the other side will have to look, have to watch Jesus through a smartphone. It's like, okay, first off, I think that would kind of diminish the whole effect of a second coming if you have to actually watch it on a smartphone. Because at that point, how do you even know it's real? Because you, that, but you're, you're going to question whether it's a movie or a television show. And second, there's at least a billion people in the world that don't have smartphones. What are they going to do? They're going to have to wait for the smart people to tell them, like show them a smartphone and say, oh yeah, by the way, and what about the tribes in the middle of whatever jungle or desert that uh, don't have access to anything? So, sorry. But yeah, yeah, so I, yeah, the, the Bible, Flat Earth, absolutely. They are linked. This one's called Flight Paths on a Flat Earth versus Globe Earth. Hi, Mark. Oh boy, this one's a little, little long. Um... No, nope. sorry, too too much too much math. If I see too many numbers in an email, I'm not going to read it. People are going to get bored. This one's called Flat Earth Community. Hello, Mark. While I was doing more research and talking to more flat earthers, I found that there is a considerable amount that resent you. It's considerable amount that resent you. Are you aware of this? Why do you think this is? I found that I don't know what that sentence means. Uh, thank you for <laughs> for talking with me. Hope things go well for you. Thanks, uh, Garrett. Well, I was doing more. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Uh, resent you. Resent. Resent, resent. Is that the same word? Resent you. I'm sorry. He's absolutely right, though. Which is, uh, the, the, sorry, somebody did an interview with me. He uh, mentioned that when he was talking to other flat earthers, there's a bunch of people that basically don't trust me. It's like, oh, that Mark Sargent guy is super suspicious. Um what can I tell you? I don't really care if you if you trust me or not. Uh, as long as you believe in flat earth, hey, great, fantastic. You can listen to whoever you want. You don't have to listen to me. Uh, and so is one of my favorite comments. They say, you know, other people should be interviewed besides Mark Sargent. It's like, great, fantastic. Have them put their, their phone number out there. Have them put out their, uh, their contact information. I don't mind. As long as you believe in flat earth, I don't care. I don't. In fact, I'd prefer it. I'd love, you know, I, I love sharing the well, getting getting other people involved. I love forwarding off interviews to other people. So when people contact me and say, hey, can you put me in touch with so, such and such? Yeah, absolutely. I would do it for you. So there you go. This one's called, is this email still valid? Mark, I'm not sure how old the video is. I got this email address from but want to converse about the Flat Earth Movement. I live in New Zealand. Regards, Chris. Yes, it's absolutely real. And I will email him back and say, yep. Of course, nowadays, I got to mention, it's not like the old days. If the email is invalid, you will get a message right away. And now you could be emailing to the wrong person, but it's not like the old days. Remember the old days, uh, back, way back in 2000 to 2005, if you emailed somebody, it could take like up to 10 minutes before it all of a sudden bounced back and nowadays it's literally five seconds this one's called what this one's called on april 11th israel will land on the moon that's from john and yeah if you guys watch that that didn't happen jaron called that one that was perfect which was i just a few days before it happened the israeli space agency decided they were going to send an unmanned probe to the moon and beam back images. And then they did a live stream. I know it was interesting that the American media did not do a live simulcast. And they took this one snapshot 22 miles up before they landed on the moon. No more snapshots after that. And then apparently 15 feet before it was going to touch down, they lost control and it crashed even though I'm not sure falling from 15 feet without thrusters would actually destroy it. But they just walked away from it. There was no pause or anything. That was the curious part. Whereas like they were waiting for data. It's like, well, it's obviously crashed. Let's let's just wrap this up. Good night, everybody. And that was it. And then, you know, they, they, they started doing their closing ceremonies right away, like it was predicted. 
Uh, it's very, very interesting. Again, another space reinforcement. No images, of course, sent from the moon at all. No video. And I love the, the globalists were saying, well, here you go. Israel's going to disprove flat Earth. In fact, it was interesting that there weren't even headlines going in before that saying Israel's going to disprove flat Earth. Nope. Crash. No images at all. And it's like, okay, flat Earth intact. Great. Fantastic. This one's called Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. My name is Brianna. I live in Florida. And I'm a big fan of yours. I saw you and Patricia Steer do an interview with Urban Influence and heard about the conference being in Dallas this year. I hope it's okay that I am reaching out to you with an idea I had. I was on the national conference site looking at tickets and I was planning for Dallas, very excited. And I saw a little glimpse of something about Flat Earth Cruise. Well, I'm not sure how far along the process you are, but I actually work for a travel agency. Oh, that specializes in large group travel and co conference cruises. I want to reach out, uh, offer my agency services and planning, executing a flat earth cruise. We have a very strong and well-established relationship with Royal Caribbean, so on and so on and so on. Uh, you know what? I will forward this off to Robbie if I get a chance. So, cool. This one's called what? Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs football player tweets. The earth is flat. Chris Jones, lineman, Kansas City Chiefs. It was good to hear the surveyor from Kansas City back on with you. I called him after you exchanged our contacts for us, a few phone conversations, but never got together. I invited him to a meetup, but don't think he was ready at the time. Yeah, cool, thank you for that. This one's called Some Questions Regarding Sticks and Shadows. Hey, Mark, how's it going? I have very recently stumbled upon your clues and have been really intrigued, understatement, upon realizing you and all the other flat earthers may actually be onto something. I love the documentary as well and have been starting to do some research and tests myself. One in particular is doing the math behind the Aristoth... Yeah, I'm still going to have problems with that one. Aristoth... Eratosthenes experiment. I'm sure you are familiar with this and I wanted to ask how you reconcile that the shadows do not increase at a linear rate as they would in a flat earth scenario. They, the shadows, indeed increase when moving further away from directly under the sun at a non-linear rate. I wanted to hear your explanation for this because it appears to me that a curvature in the earth is the only answer. Also, I have seen a recent test on YouTube with an astronaut in a vacuum. Really? Who? Where? Uh, even though it probably was only in a medium vacuum. See, there you go. Sorry. If at all. Uh, and he appeared to be fine afterward. I wanted to know your thoughts on this as well as I hear you say that is the only thing that will change your mind. Thanks again for your time. I appreciate it and really hoping to hear your work. Uh, here's the link to Arist Eratosthenes test. Yeah, whatever. The, the, the test with Eratosthenes, I keep saying this till I've got it burned into my head. Uh, the sticks and shadows argument. It's the only other defense. There's only two defenses if you can't use a space agency. One is sticks and shadows, and one is the boat going to the horizon. Boat going to the horizon, we've already solved that. Sticks and shadows, that's also very, very easy, which is, remember, uh, the sticks and shadows argument also works the same if the light source, if the sun is much, much closer and much, much smaller. It's all relative. And as far as the spacesuit training in a vacuum and i'll pause this for one second while i click on the youtube video <laughs> and of course of course the space the space the training okay and you guys gotta understand this because you don't probably watch as much media i do which is there's a there's a very very famous british automobile show called top gear and one of the three stars in it his name's james may and this particular story that he did back in 2010 and they turned it into a youtube video where he went to the united states air force and they put him into a g-force suit not an astronaut suit a flight suit for a fighter plane and it's called james may steps into a vacuum chamber james may at the edge of space <laughs> what i love about this thing and it's and it's just great one because he's absolutely terrified when he goes in and they warn him that there's going to be adverse effects if we uh, because what what they're doing is they're exposing him to an airplane cockpit if the cockpit is breached if all of a sudden the cockpit got destroyed and you're exposed to high altitude pressures which is be the simulated vacuum a sort of vacuum uh there's going to be some problems and what I love is that when you type in any anything, you're trying to look for an astronaut in a vacuum chamber, that's who comes up. 
James May, uh, a television host who just happened to go to an Air Force base and go into a simulator. Not with a space suit, with a G-Force suit. And this comes up, that's like the number one result, James May. And I love, and this from, it's uh, the YouTube channel is BBC Studios. And it's very, very interesting. And again, but th this guy, he because he's a globalist, he translated this. And he's like spacesuit training in a vacuum. And in no way, shape, or form does it say uh, in the title, spacesuit. Now, it does say in the description, or with only his spacesuit to keep him alive. It is not a spacesuit. It is an Air Force suit. It is an Air Force uh, G pressurized G-Force suit. That's all it is. Uh, but but again, love. also have seen a recent test on YouTube with an astronaut in a vacuum. Okay, first off, it was 10 years ago, and it was not an astronaut. It was just a television host who was in an Air Force base. I'm sorry, I'm going to beat this one to death. And nobody better send me this James May thing again. Ugh. That's just aggravating. Uh, this one's called McDonald's Logo Moon. Mark found this uh, uh, trash in Goodwill. I hope, uh, wait, if they can put it on the moon, let's put it on the moon. And yeah, it was, in a, it was a Goodwill store. Best team in the universe. And it's some silhouettes pointing at the moon. And the McDonald's logo is on the moon. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that never caught fire. This one's called, oh yeah, is this email still valid? You know, I did write that guy back and he wrote me back and he said, cool, thanks for the quick reply. I just recently watched Behind the Curve on Netflix, then started on the Flat Earth Clues while I'm conversing with Mark Sargent. Uh, okay, I'll let you know up front, I'm not yet a full believer, but nothing surprises me these days. As it was said in the documentary, question everything and I do. I hope you don't mind. If I shoot you a few questions and just reply when you're not too busy, what are your thoughts and other people in the movement on the sun and the moon being flat around? Regards, Chris. Yeah, I think, it, and what he means, meaning two-dimensional or three-dimensional. I think it could be two-dimensional or three-dimensional. I'm almost leaning towards two-dimensional nowadays, that it's just a, a projection, um, a 2G, 2D projection, but that it can generate uh, a frequency light. So, you know, like a, like a cold light for the moon and a, a warm light for the sun. But I'm, I'm not really decided one way or the other. This one's called 212 Faith Radio. Mark, nice job in the interview. Moon phases, even in the globe model, are nothing to do with the Earth's shadow. It's a common uh, covert, convert mistake handy because when you prove them wrong it shows how little they know about what they're defending that's from rob in the uk thank you rob this one's called question mark i'm new to looking into the flat earth is the moon round thank you so much daryl cox uh is it two-dimensional or is it three-dimensional don't know it's one of the two uh is it does it simulate it spherical yeah possibly this one's called Moon Thought. Hi, Mark. My name is Doc Robert, and I'm a retired janitor who cleaned toilets for 20 years. So I don't claim above average intelligence or have any great claim to fame, but I do have a saying I am proud of. If volume of thought made you smart, then I would be a genius. I think we can learn as much from regular guys like me as from a genius. I have another saying. A genius does not think he is smart. He thinks you're stupid. <laughs> it's good. Smart guys tend to talk down to the average unwashed. Also very true. Mark, you on the other hand never talk down to your listeners and have made me feel included in a community of thinkers who want the truth. I am including one of my thoughts in this email. If you find merit here, feel free to share it or correct the thought. All math and science estimated for brevity's sake. I am in your hands. Your friend, Doc. P.S. My thoughts are written in my personal style of fragmented sentences. It is how I think. I hope this does not ruin your experience. Okay, so let's read it real fast. It's, it's short. Uh, there is something wrong with the moon. The moon travels around the earth at 2,288 miles per hour. The earth travels around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. So when the moon is in front of earth in the direction of travel around the sun, then earth would be moving towards the moon at 67,000 miles an hour. And in one hour, we would be 67,000 miles an hour closer to the moon. That moon takes 28 days approximately for a full orbit around Earth. 
The moon is 238,900 miles from Earth. So when the moon is in front of the Earth in the direction of travel, the Earth would hit the moon in four hours, though the moon uh, is in the front position for days. Interesting. And love the fact, yeah, I love this country, uh, is that he's a re retired janitor uh, of 20 years and, and he's got three-dimensional thinking that's got me all over the place. So that's great. Uh, and I don't know how to answer that because uh, that's not where my head is. So <laughs> if anyone understands what he was saying, uh, please, by all means, shoot me an email and see if you can boil it down or put it in a different perspective for me. Thank you. This one, I buy it, but it's interesting email. Love it. And, and the first part was not written badly at all. Just so you know. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I live in Brazil. I believe in the Flat Earth. My phone number is, long phone number here, uh, WhatsApp. Oh, because he uses WhatsApp. I need more information and videos for me to present to people in my country and my family. Uh, many peoples not believe in Flat Earth. I see two documentary today. I'm reading it as is. He's from Brazil. Uh, in the Netflix, I want, <laughs> he spelled want, W-H-A-N-T, which phonetically is not wrong. Uh, I want to speak to you. I believe in you. Thank to show me. And that's from Mako Vieira. I will write him back. This one's called Revisiting Topics from Our Interview. Hello, Mark. I have been bogged down with other work, but have recently returned to my Flat Earth research. I want to ask if any Flat Earthers have tried sending a weather balloon high enough to view the shape of the Earth clearly as opposed to sending up a manned rocket and if you can send me the bible verses that claim the earth is flat because i'm having difficulty finding them thanks and i still keep up and enjoy your videos that's from paul and i wrote him back and sent him to testingtheglobe.com from rob skiba great uh, website with all sorts of fun things and and it's interesting when you say oh i'm having trouble finding the the flat earth quotes in the bible look the the bible is almost all flat earth there's only one uh, chapter and verse that even hints that it's a globe and that's isaiah 40 22 which says he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth well in the ancient hebrew circle is not ball it's not sphere it's not globe it's a completely different word so what's he talking about when he who sits upon the circle of the earth uh, or above the circle of the earth, which remember dinner plate is circular. It's round. A dining room table is round, it's, but it's also not uh, three dimensional. Again, if you run your finger uh, around a dinner plate, you, technically you've circumnavigated it. Does that mean that that dinner plate is a globe? No, it does not. But anyway, uh, yeah, testingtheglobe.com. If you're into, if you're a strong Christian and you're looking for a lot of fantastic quotes when it comes to flat earth, def definitely go to testingtheglobe.com. This one's called Flat Earth Beginner Questions. Hi, Mark. My friends and I are juniors in college, and we were just getting into researching Flat Earth. Someone we know brought up the question, what's underneath it? How do we answer this question? Would love to know your thoughts. Sincerely, a new lifelong fan. And did I write a Mac? Yes, I did. And I said, look, we don't know because uh, underneath the, the deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles by the Germans and the, the Russians. So how do we know what's down there? The question is, why does mainstream science keep telling us what's down thousands of miles when they've never been there, not even close? And they've been doing this for years, years and years. This one's called Forward Watch More Real Pictures of Earth from Deep Space on YouTube. And that's a link to a video. Let me take, let me open it up real fast. It's called "More Real Pictures of Earth from Deep Space?" Question mark. And it's from Flat Earth Brothers. Flat Earth Brothers, by the way, is doing really well. They uh, they're up to almost sixty thousand subs, and uh, it's I'm I'm proud of them. They're, they're really really doing well. So good for them. This one's called Watch the Mystery of the Blank, who may have blank 51 days after allegedly blank on YouTube. <laughs> uh, I believe this is about the, um, hang on, I'm going to open up this video real fast. One sec. Yeah, this would be the, uh, the censoring. A guy basically made a video uh, protesting the whole Sandy Hook thing. 
And during it, he left out every single mention of, of Sandy Hook and any person involved in Sandy Hook so that he wasn't censored. And it worked. Uh, but the but the the redacting the, his own censorship that he had to do on his video was ridiculous to to fool the the YouTube filters, so fascinating. Uh, and I didn't I didn't enjoy the video. I, I thought it was very clever how he laid it out. It was it was like watching a um, a congressional hearing, you know, where all just about every other word is is blacked out, and and people are trying to make sense of of the paragraphs. This one's called balloon popping in cooling tower. Mark, I saw this video and the sound was very similar to the sound of lightning. Could it be that the sound of lightning is similar to the sound uh, because the sound bounces off the dome of our enclosed world? I think so. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to listen to that. I have not checked it out yet. This one's called Corporate Advertisements on Rockets and Spacecraft. Mark, here's a video about ads on rockets. It's all laughable. They claim the Americans won't take advertisement money. Russia, however, they'll steal some dough to fake a golf shot, drink Pepsi, or eat pizza. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, it's very, it's very, very interesting. Which is why hasn't Nat, why doesn't NASA take corporate advertising dollars? Or more to the point, let's let's look at uh, SpaceX. Which is remember I said that. Why did SpaceX, a private company, and Tesla, a public company, uh, why didn't they take any advertising dollars? Why didn't you use the four-seater car instead of the two-seater convertible and just call up Disney and say, look, uh, put, let's fill the seats with mannequins of your choosing. So instead of just a generic no nothing mannequin, let's choose a Stormtrooper, Boba Fett, Iron Man, and Groot. Put those four into the seats and hey, that rocket pretty much pays for itself. Disney would have paid for everything. The reason why NASA can't ask for corporate money is because, if, if, again, if I was a corporation, let's say I was Frito-Lay and I wanted to put my sticker on whatever, well, there's going to be conditions. I'm going to ask. So it's like, look, if I'm going to give you like $3 million to have my logo on the side of your capsule or rocket or moon buggy or whatever it is. I'm going to want to be in there. I, I'm going to want access to check this stuff out. Nope. They do not want any private. They want, remember, this is a military operation. They do not want any private corporations anywhere close to that stuff. Sorry. See, there's a security issue there. So that's it. They, they, they won't let it happen. And they just rely on taxpayer dollars. And you say, well, you know, $52 million a day or $54 million a day should be enough for anybody, right? No, there's never enough money. When you get up at that levels, there is never, never enough money. But thank you for that. That was sent by Virgil. This is called Exit the Matrix Expo. Hi, Mark. I hope you're doing well. I was wondering if you are aware of this event, which supposedly Mike Hughes is organizing. I found it in one of Tim Osmond's websites. He's currently He currently has a couple of channels. I thought IPS had said that he only used the Flat Earth Movement to promote his book. Yeah. I also thought that Mike did not want to get linked to Tim anymore. This event will be in Las Vegas, as you can see from the screenshots. And didn't Chris Pontius say he was going to be taking his motorcycle to Vegas? I think I heard him say that when you interviewed him. Was he referring to this event? Yes, he was. Anyway, I was just curious if you knew. Keep it flat. Alma. Uh, yeah. The, the Vegas thing, which is being done by IPS and Mad Mike. Uh, of course, I'm not a huge fan of, of Mad Mike right now because even though he and I shook hands and talked briefly when we were down in Denver before I left. Uh, Mad Mike is involved behind the scenes with uh, trying to copyright some of my stuff. No reason whatsoever other than he's just trying to grab everything he can. As a matter of fact, uh, coincidentally, uh, yesterday you probably saw the story where Mad Mike is suing Logan Paul because Logan Paul used his image in Logan Paul's little mockumentary thing which he put on YouTube. So Mad Mike is now suing him. Uh, this one's called Space Suit Test in a Vacuum. Have a nice day, Andre. Oh boy, can't wait to click on this. What What do you bet? What do you bet it's James May? What do you bet? And no, it's not. It's going to be, uh, it's called Trying on a Real Space Suit. It was published in 2013 by Euro News Knowledge. And that's about it. He tries on a real spacewalk suit doesn't go into a vacuum chamber as far as i know 12 million dollars for that suit oh, i gotta watch that thing i'm definitely saving that 
So thank you for that. Let me put that in my to-do pile. Check that out. Uh, let's see. This one's called Departure Date Last Show. Hey, Mark, when's your departure date? And what is the last Strange World show you're going to be doing before you head out? I made this nice thumbnail. Please uh, use if you like. I can also modify it for Strange World. And that's from Jack. And uh, Jack Frost, by the way, not just Jack. The... I'm leaving for the New Zealand Flat Earth Conference on the 24th. And I won't be back until the 6th. But however, that works out really, really well because the 24th is the day after Strange World. So I'll do Strange World on the 23rd. So I'm doing it next week on the 16th and again on the 23rd. I will miss the 30th, but I'm flying back on a Monday. So yeah, I'll be really tired, but sure, why not? So I will only technically miss one show but i think i'm going to have a guest host uh which will probably be uh peanut gallery and um um karen b maybe or zulu i don't know somebody's going to guest host the show this one's called hey mate just a quick voicemail i sent hope you're well brother if can please listen and get back to me when convenient respect bro that's from tony cool i'll listen to that this call this is called we can only see about 24 miles dear mark take a look at this video and see what he is saying i will click on the link hello guys and, welcome. and the video is called mandela effect chemtrails demons christian simulation simulation and a flat earth are just lies okay enslaved by no media so he doesn't believe in flat earth got it I will probably not watch that when I get a chance. But hey, you know what? Appreciate you sending it anyway. This one's called Shadows of Planes. It's a YouTube video. Check that out. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I've been watching and thinking a lot in the past year about the flat or round Earth. I have a question that I can't explain. How does the satellite dish really work? If the satellite would travel around at 1,500 kilometers an hour around the globe at the exact same position and you have a dual LNB that catches two satellites in Europe we use Hotbird and Astra mostly how does it come that we don't lose even for a second the connection are they so synchronized that we don't lose signal or there is a dome that reflects the signal I think this was not part of of your proving best regards alex from romania no i didn't really look in the satellites that much uh, when i initially made the clues just didn't i mean there was so many topics i could choose from and honestly didn't know where i was going to go in 2015 with it anyway so yeah do i do, are there things up there yes do i think they were put as far as satellites do i think they were put there up, but put up there by rockets no i do not and could there be signals that are reflecting off the dome yeah sure possibly This one's called Watch Massive Flat Earth Disinfo Campaign to dis Discredit Investigation on YouTube. Um, that's from, sent by James. And it's not what you think. It sounds like a troll title, but it's not. Uh, it was actually made by a bigger YouTube channel called AMTV. He's got about 660,000 subscribers. And he's actually finally coming down because, uh, because YouTube was starting to censor Flat Earth a little bit. Uh, remember, we, we get the allies from the conspiracy world. Nobody likes censoring. Even, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So it, nobody nobody likes to give an inch in any part of the conspiracy crowd. So he was kind of backing us. So that was kind of fun. So thanks for that. This one's called The Internet Hive Mind is Brilliant. Much watched video. Hi, Mark. Okay to read on air. For anyone who doubts the intelligence and, quite frankly, sheer genius of the Internet hive mind, please watch this 2017 video about a capture the flag game between 4chan MAGAs and the anti-Trumpers headed by actor Shia LaBeau. This is not meant to politically endorse either side, but it is a testament to the bright minds at work on the Internet. Yes, Mark, you were right to ask the hive mind back in 2015, Flat Earth Clues series. It is pure genius. If you read this on air, please tell me what QA episode. Thanks. Enjoy, Jack. Uh, yeah, the capture of the flag, and I will save this off. Okay, 
it is, a, is, it is a very interesting thing, but let's be fair here. The real reason why the Shia LeBeau team lost is because he went out in public and people recognized him as being an actor and they took selfies with him. And all they had to do was like, oh, okay, this is where the actor is. If you take a selfie with somebody and that, that's immediately we're going to post. It's like, oh, I saw him at a 7-Eleven here. It's like, okay, that really, <coughs> sorry. Sorry, I needed a drink of water there. I was dying. Talking too much. Have a drink while you're talking. Uh, so yeah, when Shia was out there, people kind of... That was That's what the giveaway was. Yes, there was some neat triangulation stuff and the capture of the flag. It was very clever towards the end. But the initial... How they even got close was because Shia went out there in public. And they, they tracked him to certain spots. And so even though the flag was pointing at a clear blue sky, the planes... Only helped him at the end. It was mostly because he was walking around. If Shy, the, the short version is if Shy hadn't been involved, they wouldn't have found the flag. If all he had to do was stay home, they would have never found the freaking flag. There's plenty of places you can hide things that no one's ever going to find if you're just going to show a clear blue sky. Even if planes are going across. I mean, you'll get closer, but no. Uh, okay, let's see if we can find a fun one to end on. This one's called from Fox News, ISS Expedition 59 U.S. Space Walk Coverage from the Johnson Space Center. Yep. Bunch of trash. This one's called the Bottomless Pit. Hi, Mark. Well, I've finally become a full-fledged flat earther. You know what? We're going to end on this one. I was able to chalk off most of the scriptures in the Bible to a geocentric globe earth and traditional universe. But here's a scripture I forgot about. Revelation 9 and the Bottomless Pit. How can there be an unending hole inside a globe Earth? There couldn't be. The only way it works is on a flat model that has a floor of undetermined depth and an unknown exit point. I can't believe I missed it. I wish you Godspeed in what you're doing. Regards, Jeff. Cool. Thank you for that. And you know what? Let's just end on that one. I've got more to do, but you know what? I got other stuff I got to do today. Uh, so thanks to everyone that sent me in an email. Remember, you can shoot your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.